Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week number 37 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Wild Card Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Hole. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one, Ed Kunkel is a convicted felon tormented by his own demons, and currently the suspect in a string of serial killings involving five missing local women. Eve Adams is a single woman trying to cope with a tragic loss, and Brody Jameson is a homicide detective looking for answers. All three lives will intertwine with disturbing, deadly consequences when they discover what's inside Ed's shed. Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's Slashback Challenge theme of Wild Card Slashers, we were simply challenged to watch and review a slasher film of our own choice. So I chose to watch and review Hole, basically because it was put out by Wild Eye Releasing, and I haven't reviewed any Wild Eye films for my channel so far, so this will be the first one. And I have to say that I have mixed feelings towards this one. I went into it completely blind, not knowing anything about it or what to expect, other than I just really liked the cover art. I didn't even read the plot description on the back before watching it. And to me, Hole is a mood piece, meaning I feel like it's the type of movie you need to be in the mood for. It's a psychological slasher movie filled with deep conversations with deep meaning. It's just not a movie that you turn on and kick back and relax to. Hole is the type of movie that you have to pay attention to, almost to the point that you actually have to study it if you have any hope to figure out what's going on. And that's my biggest problem with this movie. The story is all over the place. And if I understood it correctly, the story's playing out backwards. So it at least seems like the movie opens up with the climax and just bounces around from that point on. And I have to say that I really like the opening of the movie because it seems like all hell's breaking loose. But unfortunately, we don't actually get to see the events that build up and leads us to this climax because it's already happened and we actually never get to see it. And it just really felt like this movie had no chronological order to it. It always felt like a chore to figure out where you were in the movie's overall timeline of what was going on. And it doesn't really help the fact that we have three really important characters in this movie storyline that we're trying to keep up with and everything seems to be moving in reversed order. It just really seems like it's asking a lot of the viewer. But with all that being said, I know this sounds like a negative review so far, but I feel like this movie has some replay value and it's worth watching again now that I know what to expect from its twisted storyline. And hopefully if anyone who's listening to this review is interested in checking this movie out, hopefully you find this review to be helpful because I just think it's important to know from the start of what you're getting into. Overall, even though I thought the storyline was a chore to keep up with, I still had a decent time watching Hole and still found the story to be interesting. There's no doubt while you are watching this movie, you can tell that they were working with a very low budget, but I have to say that I absolutely love the way this movie was shot and filmed. It not only has a gritty look to it, but it also, at times, has a artsy look to it, and I feel like it totally works with the way this movie was set up. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Hole. So the main character in this movie storyline is Ed Kunkel, who is the killer in this movie storyline. We know that he was a criminal, even though I don't recall the movie ever touching on what he was locked up for. We do get some backstory on Ed, and we find out that he was abused by his mother as a child. She would tie him up to a chair that was in a shack behind their house. She would taunt him, verbally abuse him, and was just overall cruel to him. So that's basically what leads Ed to growing up as a very unstable human being. Next up, we have Detective Brody, who seems like he has worked on a few too many murder cases and now is starting to relate with the killers from his cases and starting to sympathize with them. He does tell his wife a pretty dark story about a case he has been working on. His marriage to his wife seems to be in a troubled state, and so he has been investing deeply into his work. We also have Eve, who is a woman that is trying to cope with the loss of her baby, and somewhere along the line, she has befriended Ed. She goes on to tell Ed a story about how she deals and copes with her everyday life, and what's strange about this is 
it actually is taking place before the birth of her baby. So I feel like this is more of a reflection of Ed's character and how he is being presented to us. But she goes on to say, Ed, have you ever wanted something so bad that it causes you physical pain that just thinking about it, the possibility of having it makes you feel good? So you spend your life trying to fill it, that hole in your soul. And the more time goes by, the more desperate you get, the more despair you feel, and you're just helpless. You're like a desert searching for an oasis. We also have a priest who seems to be trying to help Ed down a better path in life, but we do have a questionable scene with the priest and his involvement with the opening sequence. We also do have one brief scene with Ed's probation officer, but I can say overall that I really enjoyed the characters in this movie, and overall I thought the acting was really solid for a low-budget slasher film. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. So I have already mentioned a few times that Ed Kunkel is the killer in this movie storyline. He has an interesting backstory that is filled with mummy issues. So it kind of put me in mind of Norman Bates from Psycho, and this movie also gave me some Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. As a child, he was hidden away and tied to a chair in a shack that was behind the family home. He was verbally abused and beaten by his mother, so it's not too much of a stretch to imagine that now that he's all grown up, that he targets female victims who look like his mother. So we do actually see him wearing the flesh of his victims as a mask. So basically, he's wearing their face. So basically, it's a dead skin mask. We also do get to see him wearing another mask from time to time, and it's basically a clear looking mask that you can see right here on the cover art. And I thought this mask was much more scary and much more effective. So he does target female victims who resemble his mother. He will kidnap them, tie them to the chair that's in the shack behind the house, and then he will murder them, and then he will display body parts all around the shack. So that's pretty cool. We don't really get to see a lot of this stuff happening. His weapon of choice is a big mallet. And as far as the kills go in this movie, it does have a pretty low body count, and all the kills are basically the same. There's not really much blood and gore either, so that's pretty disappointing. The kills we do get are basically Ed striking his victims with the mallet and then it cuts away. Overall, I had a pretty decent time watching Hole. I do have some mixed feelings about it, and it's kind of hard for me to recommend. The mixed feelings I have are more or less because of the movie's twisted up storyline with it being kind of hard to follow. But I will say that if you do want to watch this one, you definitely better be paying attention. So I'm going to give Hole a 5.5 out of 10. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you have seen Hole, or just let me know what you think about my review. And I would like to thank you all for watching.